Hey mamas and welcome back to Work and Mama. Today we are starting off a new series called How to Snoo. <laughs> so this is all about the Snoo um, Smart Bassinet by The Happiest Baby on the Block. If you've read that book, it's by Dr. Harvey Karp and he has in recent years created this robotic bassinet that basically provides your baby with soothing sounds and motion, basically all of the elements of the five S's that he is has coined to help soothe your baby back to sleep um, or to settle them down, calm them down. So we're starting off the series. These are gonna be relatively quick videos. I'm hoping five minutes or less each with just really quick tips for using this new. Things like getting started, maybe tips and tricks with the app, different features that are coming out. So I currently have a almost four month old and he is my second baby that I've had in the snoo. The first baby I had um, in it for actually seven months. And this baby um, has been in it since we came home from the hospital with him. And so we have some experience with the snoo and I wanna share that with you and hopefully um, be able to give a little per perspective too on what your expectations might be if you're considering buying one. Um, things like that because it is different with every baby and I can say that from experience now that I've had two They are both two very different sleepers and the snoo has been beneficial to both of them but it is definitely a different experience with each baby so the first question that you're probably going to ask is is the snoo worth it should I buy it and I will start off with saying maybe, but you won't know until you try. <laughs> so that is probably not the answer you're looking for. I will also say, in my opinion, as a mom, yes, it is worth it simply for the peace of mind. Something that I was really um, anxiety uh, stricken about was SIDS. I shouldn't say was, I still am <laughs> of having an infant again. So. Um, I'm really concerned about that. And one of the biggest benefits of the snoo is that they keep your baby lying safely on their back. Now, there are different experts that don't necessarily agree with restricting baby's movement during sleep past a certain age, particularly when they start to roll or show signs of rolling, you're not supposed to swaddle them anymore. So the snoo set, the, the happiest baby says that for the snoo, it's actually safe to keep them swaddled only in the snoo because it keeps them flat on their back the entire time. There is no way for them to roll. So the reason you stop swaddling after a certain age, which is usually two, three months when they show signs of wanting to roll or have started rolling is because you don't want them to roll onto their belly and not be able to get back up because they're swaddled and their arms are constricted. So that's when they start recommending to swaddle with arms out and things like that in case baby does roll, they can help themselves. Um, but with the snoo, there is not um, that concern. So for me, that is the number one, is it worth it? Yes. Now, the reason I say maybe um, and maybe not for some people, it is obviously very expensive and with all the supply chain issues that have been happening recently uh, throughout COVID, the price has gone up, the discounts have become few, fewer and further between. Like I think there was just recently a 15% off sale that they had to celebrate the anniversary of the snoo existing. Um, but I don't know that those are going to continue to be. Um, and it's very expensive. What I will say is there is a resale market for it. And because of that, you might be able to buy one in used condition. Um, you know, it may have had one owner, two owners. Those are things that you'd want to find out if you were going to buy a secondhand one. Maybe I'll do a video about buying a secondhand one and things to look for. But because we actually did that for our first um, baby and then we sold it later. And the, uh, the difference in what we paid versus what we sold it for, we felt was well worth it. Um, so of course you're out the money to begin with, but there is the opportunity to sell it when you're done with it. Another option is renting the snoo. So that might be something that could make it a little bit more feasible for you. Of course, when you rent it, you are out that money. There is no getting it back, but there is free shipping on, on it both ways when you do the rental program and it's something to consider. So <clears throat> to conclude my, is it worth it? I just wanna share very briefly 
the experience that we've had with the two different babies and kind of styles of sleep. And I'm sure that there are many more examples out there. Um, I read a lot of comments. There's actually like Facebook pages um, dedicated to parents who have the snoo and you know to kind of be there for each other and and have a community and and get advice and things like that and um, I kept seeing like you know people talking about this was two years ago with my first baby my baby is sleeping at two months all the way through the night like they're only two months old and they go I put them down at 7 p.m. and they don't wake up till 6 a.m. and I'm like <laughs> how is that possible <laughs> That's amazing. Let me tell you, don't go in with that expectation. You may be one of the lucky few that has a baby that does that, but that is not necessarily going to be everyone's experience. I have no idea how common it is, like, you know, a percentage or anything. There's nothing I can throw out there for you. Um, but what I can say is they recommend that you put baby down into the snoo when they're drowsy but still awake to help them kind of start learning to self-soothe themselves to sleep. For my first baby, we had to put him in asleep every single time. If I put him in when he was still awake, even if he was drowsy, it was like as soon as he hit the bed, wide awake. <laughs> and then we're starting kind of an overtired cycle, which is not fun because baby, is having a hard time getting themselves to sleep and they're cranky and they're crying and it's just really hard when you get into that overtired like I said it is a cycle because they kind of I'm, I'm so tired that I can't sleep things like that so anyway I wanted to share that that was my experience with my first so I was not ever able to put him in and have it kind of soothe him to sleep the other thing I will say is that I do think that the motion and the sound, everything about the sleeping experience once he was in there was really soothing for him and he really liked it and he did become a very good sleeper. So while I had to put him down asleep, he did um, stay asleep for long stretches of time earlier than I um, probably expected or probably would have seen if he was in a, in a stationary um, crib setting. So. It was good for him, um, but not necessarily the magic miracle that I had hoped for. With our second baby, however, <clears throat> it does put him to sleep, and I'm kind of seeing a little bit of a miracle at work here. He's four months, he's not quite four months old, but for the past few weeks, um, probably since he was about three months old, he um, has been sleeping, we would put him down drowsy. He has been sleeping from about 10 p.m.-ish is usually the last time he goes out all the way through to anywhere between like 4.30 and 7, which is a pretty big range, but sometimes he does sleep in like pretty late and sometimes he wakes up and seems like he's starving. And I think it has to do with him you know, having growth spurts and things like that, where some days he's just always doing his eating and some days he's just sleep, sleep, sleeping, which is probably when he's doing his growing. So um, I'm able to put him in drowsy and it puts him to sleep. And if he does wake up in the middle of the night, which definitely happens, um, he'll start making little sounds and kind of start moving a little bit. And that's when the snoo kind of triggers. Um, it has some sort of I don't want to say AI because it seems kind of like a buzzword, but some sort of mechanism that it will react to that. And that's when it kind of kicks up the amount of sound and soothing motion to put baby back to sleep. And that really works for him for sure. So he is getting really long stretches of sleep, which is fantastic. What I will say is that we definitely went through a sleep regression with him, my current baby, um, which I think we're on the tail end of now because he's pretty much not doing it anymore but every one or every couple of days it seems like we are having kind of a false start issue where we're putting him to bed at the time that he normally goes down which is like 7 p.m ish we're trying to get him on the same bedtime as his big brother um so 7 37 anywhere between 7 and 8 it's kind of a win big window but that's what we do and he seems like he's so tired we put him down and then like 10 minutes later he's awake and crying and then <laughs> for probably like two weeks he was doing this like every single night between the hours of like 
8 p.m. and 10 p.m., which was really tough because that's normally our like parent alone time, like relax, maybe have a glass of wine, watch some TV <laughs> that's not kid related and things like that. Um, so that was really tough, but I, I read about it and that's apparently like a pretty common sleep regression pattern that comes up between the ages of three and four months. So you may or may not experience that with your baby. I did not experience that with my first baby. Um, but I would not say that this new helped us with that, even though it definitely does kind of rock him to sleep and keep him asleep longer and soothe him back when he has kind of starts waking up from a light sleep cycle. So I wanted to share all of that with you in this kind of broad introduction to the how to snoo series, as well as is the snoo worth it? My opinion is yes. Obviously, I think that since I actually have bought it twice now, the first time I bought it used, the second time I bought it new, and um, that has been our experience. So if you're interested in this kind of content and you wanna see more of my How To Snoo series where we go through other features and um, discussions around the snoo, then please subscribe to Work and Mama. I'd love to have you. And if you thought this was helpful, please give it a like, and we'll see you in the next one.